lumbered with the same old regulars, crew cuts and short back and sides were pretty much the extent of what she got to do. In the last couple years, 15, 16, maybe up to 20 separate women had entered. A few of them her friends. Most others only returned a handful of times, eventually scared away by Melissa's heavy-handed recommendations. Looking back, there were times she'd tried to push people into styles before they were ready, as she liked to think of it. Truth be told, women who want to cut 10-inch, even 15-plus off are exceptionally hard to find, much less women who can be talked into it. Just the other day, Melissa had been reminiscing over her past triumphs. Oh, Leah. Such a memorable one. I was sweeping that hair for ages. She really opened herself up to it though. And Natasha. Sweet little Tash. She was just like Julia, probably too shy to say anything. Melissa flicked through her records. Oh, and Harry. Poor innocent Harry. I almost felt bad. Maybe I should have sent him away with a beanie. Now chuckling at fond memories. Under the makeshift reception desk, she kept a secret catalog. Photo after photo, usually of the aftermath, before the cape was even removed, taken under the premise of promotional material. Externally, Melissa's desire was, in many ways sadistic. To her, it was a way of showing people what she thought best, and to have some naughty fun, from time to time, of course. Quite honestly, she herself had experienced a dramatic, not entirely wanted, haircut. She wasn't always the lady of the salon the ruthless Barbarette. A short hair convert ever since, experimenting drastically in the following years. She believed in supplying these mandatory epiphanies. It's good for them. They'll see her, her instincts told her. It started opportunistic. A passing mention of you'd look great with it a bit shorter. Then there was the white lies. I needed to cut off all the damage usually worked. Her skills and coercion grew. And with it, her audacity. It had been at least four months since the last one and the yearnings were stronger than ever. By now, she was no stranger from resorting to intimidation and downright domination, as Julia was finding out. The dominant title she wore well, in a few cases, it carried her services well beyond a haircut. But right now, her focus was on Julia. The clippers fell silent once again, the right side of Julia's head reduced to an even fur coating, one centimeter long at most. Melissa took great satisfaction in the way she exhibited her art, turning Julia's barbershop throne agonizingly, slowly, to face the other way. Clippings of all lengths were strewn across the floor and Julia herself. Her lap was filled already. Thick, luscious, long brown curls piled up on the clean white cape. There was no mistaking this massacre. Just as she started to rotate, a passerby locked eyes through the window, reminding Julia that she was on full display. This must look insane, she thought, as she looked back helplessly, people beginning to gawk at Melissa's show as they slowed their walk. Facing away from the window, she knew that yet more shearing was imminent, but now she felt every pair of eyes behind her. With that, her head was tilted once again. Less teasing this time around, Melissa was only finishing up what she had started. That didn't stop the waterfall though, noticeable weight taken off with each pass. Heaps continued forming, with this avalanche the base of the chair was lost, a river of hair encircling it. The stacks of hair were dense, dense enough that as they collected in her lap, it was difficult to see the white of the cape through the brunette tones. After finishing, Melissa stood back to admire. My goodness, what a mess, that must feel so much better. Melissa knew Julia wasn't exactly going to be replying cheerfully. She grabbed handfuls of hair from the ground, holding it up and letting it fall onto Julia's lap. Aha! Uh -huh. I know. I said I'd get you cleaned up proper, and don't you worry, we'll do just that. Caught up in the thrill, Melissa had made her decision. Julia would get Melissa's full, short, sharp and shocking experience. The chair was turned once again, placing Julia directly in front of the mirror. Melissa made a conscious decision to resection the long hair still on top of Julia. Using multiple clips, she twisted it up and out of the way, making Julia's view crystal clear. Clippers fired up again, now with no guard present to provide protection. Expert barber technique was demonstrated, once again beginning at the nape. A slow pass of the walls, all the way up, as before. Julia's ears felt cold after the last round, but now her scalp itself did. Deep down. Way deep down it was a strange feeling for Julia. At the surface, she was pissed really fucking pissed. But this vibration, the tingling of the clippers, was pleasing. 
It was totally new to her, and, under different circumstances, something to save her. Meticulous clipper work persisted. Once the back was clear, Melissa positioned herself at Julia's side, waiting to see the reaction in the mirror. Firmly placed under her sideburn, Melissa pushed on. Julia watched as the clippings fell, tumbling along the clippers onto her barbarette's hand. It continued up the side of her head, carving out a pale road, which peeked out from below. The color drained from Julia's face. Bald! I... It's bald! Understanding what she'd been reduced to, she looked to Melissa. Her face, however, was beaming. Pride on full show, pearly white teeth on show as she owns the smile she was previously hiding. Melissa's wall clippers had no difficulty navigating the prickly fuzz. From right to left, the unbearably slow shearing gave Julia at least some consolation. Nothing she could do to change the result, she stopped resisting, letting the sensations intensify. In her acceptance, the built-up anticipation swayed towards positive. All the wrongness, in a way, compounded, giving rise to a feeling of mischievous. It was totally unlike Julia, but that made it all the more exciting. Daring. Bold. All the things she was told she wasn't. It was liberating. Melissa had, meanwhile, finished using her clippers to full effect. A zero undercut, all the way around, all the way up to the crown. The harvest was bountiful, the clippers earning their keep well today. Pulling back, an idea shone in her head. Energized, she rummaged through the drawers under the counter, retrieving her next implement. It meant nothing to Julia, but this was Melissa's house, and this meant she was serious. She checked the charge, full, as expected. This sounded different. Quieter, but higher and harsher pitched. It wasn't often needed, but Melissa adored using the foil shaver. She almost squealed with delight, now this is an undercut. A true barbarette at work she worked carefully, and now anticipating the rest of the cut, quickly. Foil shiver in hand, she followed the back of Julia's exposed head up to its natural curve. Ending up around mid-ear level, Melissa initially thought of giving her a fade, but fading into a zero didn't quite give the satisfaction of a good skin fade, so skin to the top it was. Julia sat patiently, secretly enjoying her transformation, to a degree. Tempted to reach out from below the cape, just to touch. Touch any of it. The freshly shorn hair waiting in her lap. Or the undercut. This is all so strange, and wrong. But, but I can't wait. I can't wait to feel it. Julia thought, dwelling on her moment of liberation. Not much more to go now, hun. Sit tight, you're already starting to look like a professional. Not even Melissa's goading could distract Julia from the barbarette's delicate fingers brushing up against her freshly shorn, skin-tight hair. Her scalp transmitted everything, Melissa playfully dragging her nails along what was now unrecognizable as hair, a faint gray tint sitting below the mass left above.